Welcome to Get Savvy, the podcast for business owners who want to claim back their time through the power of delegation, streamlining, and productivity. I'm Tisha, and I am here with my co-host, Joe. and today we are discussing leveling up your emails, which everyone uses emails these days, don't they? <laughs> yeah, do you? Oh, you're probably too young. Do you remember the day <laughs> where we didn't have any email? <laughs> I often think, how did businesses run without email? Everyone just picked up the phone back, but, back in the day. And then sent a letter to confirm <laughs> yeah. all I had talked about. Or Facts. just like, was everyone just more reliable back then? Like you, you were, Probably. You went, your word was your word. Yep. You didn't well, need to confirm so. everything in writing. Nowadays. Probably. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, fax, maybe. Facts. Yes, yeah. I forgot about the facts. Yeah. <laughs> See, I remember. That's right. <laughs> you are way too young to know what a fax machine is, Tisha. I know what a fax is. I know what a floppy disk is. No, all the good Set things. Tape. Yep. Have one of those, <laughs> press and record and play at the same time to record the radio. Yes. Landlines. Yep. Yeah. Those were the days. <laughs> anyway. Now, we're all with overwhelmed, crazy, chaotic yep. inboxes. Yay. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, most people, if not everyone, are using email, whether it is for work or for personal reasons. So it's actually quite an important way to communicate with people these days. And we were just talking before we started recording, actually, that you do just subconsciously start judging this email that has come into your inbox, especially if you've never spoken to that person before, you're making a judgment call on it. You're making a judgment call on how you've been addressed, like the tone of the email in general. What does this person want from me? You're just subconsciously thinking all of these things about the email that's come in. So Mm -hmm. making sure that your emails are actually coming across well is very important, especially if you're using it for business. Yeah, it's like whether whether you're writing it to a colleague, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. applying for a job yourself if you're not a business owner, Mm -hmm. (laughs) messaging a client, yeah, confirming some really important details, talking to a team member about something. Yeah, there are a lot of different types of emails and people that will be receiving those. And it's so important Mm. to get the tone right because they can't see your expressions or hear your tone. They're only reading. Like, is it super clear? This is this is one of my bugbears. It's like someone (laughs) sends me an email and it's like, I have no idea what you want, (laughs) when you want it by. Uh, like yes. it's, it's so confusing like what are you actually asking me so getting that mm-hmm. really right and making sure that that person understands what you are requiring of them or asking them is so important yeah. and by when <laughs> always have a deadline number one tip from me for email <laughs> yeah if someone is reading your email and then they're left with more questions after reading it then you haven't done a good job yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So we've got some tips for you to think about before you hit send because we don't want those kind of awkward Mm. email misunderstandings happening for you or the like non response because that person has Mm. no idea what you want. Absolutely. So our first tip is clear subject lines. Now, not just a clear email, clear subject lines as well. We don't want it to be vague and weird and cryptic. You kind of want to get to the point or summarize somehow in that subject line so that the person knows what they're walking into when they're opening their email Mm -hmm. and knows straight from the email subject line Mm. if they are going to have to do something or not like I like (laughs) to put the deadline in the subject line because I know that that person then when they're scrolling down all of their emails is like, ah, oh, there's my deadline. That's very soon. I need to mm-hmm. actually action that one. Yeah. And you want to stand out, especially if you know that person's got a very busy inbox, if they're likely to skim over yours or think that it's spam or something like that, actually make sure that it stands out. And yeah, you can do that by getting straight to the point, putting that important information in the subject line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And our next one is actually avoiding spam filters. So this one is also very important, not just when you're sending day-to-day emails, but also for marketing emails, because those get caught by spam filters very often, especially if you're using certain keywords and phrases, like even the words free or opportunity get flagged as (laughs) spam. And so they're going to go into people's junk. And then you're going to wonder why no one's opening your newsletter that you're sending out or yeah, I mean, if it's a day-to-day email and it lands in someone's junk, that was probably pretty important. That's not ideal. So, <laughs> yeah. So don't assume that someone's received your email either. Eh? If you're if you're mm. needing a response, like maybe pick up the phone and and check in to make sure they've yep. got it. Yeah, you can very easily Google things that get flagged as spam frequently in inboxes. But yeah, those those words and even using all capitals and lots of exclamation points because you're so excited to be sending out this newsletter to everyone and then (laughs) it's going to get flagged as spam because they know that it's not a personalized email because you're just so excited to be sending the email (laughs) (laughs) yeah all right the next one is to really like mind your tone and know your audience like who are you actually emailing and what tone does this need to be Mm -hmm. yeah As we have just talked about, people will make a judgment call. And so if you're emailing someone that's in a very corporate setting and you're just going, what's up, man? Can you get this back to me maybe sometime (laughs) next week? They're probably going to be like, what the heck is this? (laughs) Yes. Choosing the appropriate language and greetings too. Like how should you actually greet this person in the email? Mm. Getting that right is important. Yeah, because, yeah, there there are so many ways just to say hi and, yeah, don't go saying what's up or <laughs> so <laughs> Unless it's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and especially even more important if you're emailing someone that you've never met before, it's going to be slightly different for maybe someone within your organization, someone that you email frequently. Play it safe, use more formal language if it is someone that you haven't spoken to before. Can't go wrong that way. Mm -hmm. And sorry, you go, Joe. (laughs) If you're not sure how to address someone, it's always better to be too polite than Mm -hmm. not polite enough. Just like the previous one, you can't be too polite. You're never going to get in trouble or get it wrong if you do that. Yeah. And don't forget that tone can be read into your emails as well. It may be a tone that, absolutely was not there for you but things like sarcasm may not translate so well over email you may (laughs) mean it one way someone takes it very seriously and you're going to end up with that awkward miscommunication so just after you've written your email have a have a wee skim read through it and see how it could potentially be taken if you're sending an email a marketing email, an e-newsletter, something like that, always make Mm -hmm. sure that it is in your brand tone of voice so that those who are receiving it are not like, oh, is this from, (laughs) who's this from? Like I never heard them speak like this before. You want that real consistency of this is our brand, this is how we talk, and they know what that would be, know what to expect from your email and what kind of language you're going to use. Now, our next one is one of my pet peeves is when people reply all to an email that they really do not need to because, yeah, I mean, you're just clogging up people's inboxes for no reason. If they need to be CC'd in, then cool. But especially if you're in some kind of a group email, really just think, do I need to reply all or can I just click reply to that one person that sent me the email? Because not everyone cares if you're not going to make that meeting because you are taking your cat out for a walk or something <laughs> like not the entire organization is going to need to know that if you're telling your manager, you can't make a meeting or, you know, just be very careful when using reply all because it's not necessary a lot of the time. Yes. Like if if a couple of people in an organization have been CD, CD'd into an email that's been sent to you, mm. that person has actually CC'd them in specifically so that they know what's going on. So absolutely click mm. the reply all. But yeah, in a big group, like 
I can't make something. That's definitely yeah. a no-no. Yes, especially. And actually on this note, if someone sends you a calendar invite, you can actually do the little toggle to not send the response to people. Probably more important for inside your organization, or yeah. sorry, not as important for people inside your organization if you're accepting meetings. If you're accepting an invitation with someone outside of your organization or someone that you haven't met before, then turning that on so that they know you've accepted the time, mm -hmm. that is something to keep an eye on as well, sort of on the same lines as that. Our next one is knowing when to pick up the phone or actually using internal chat tools. Not everything has to be through email. And if there is something that is going to be resolved quicker over the phone, especially if you need to ask a few questions, that can quite often be easier and quicker to do it over the phone. It might be nice and easy to hide behind your email, but yeah, I, I, I don't know why people hesitate so much to pick up the phone because you're not that that person receiving the call is not going to pick up the phone if they don't have the time for it so you don't need to worry about that and you're going to get an answer quicker especially if it's really important or time pressing so don't mm. just or if you're coordinating hide. something like there's and you know that there's going to be a lot of back and forth mm. so that's way easier in a phone call yeah and yeah if if you're sending a lot of internal emails then Maybe time to consider whether you can use something like Slack or we have a tool called Teamwork that we have chats in with our whole team and they, they have a bunch of different channels for different subjects and, you know, we've got fun banter channels as well. So rather than us just having emails flying around internally all day, then we know that that's that place for it and our inboxes are reserved for clients and other important emails that we're sending and receiving mm -hmm. yes i don't see why any organization that has team members wouldn't be using a chat tool now like mm. you can use them for free in one of my businesses we mm. use just the free version of slack and it's absolutely yeah. fine and those who are on microsoft 365 there is teams, teams. that has a chat yeah. function in it so yeah utilize something that you already have in your business i'm sure that you have an internal chat tool available mm -hmm. and Again, <laughs> don't be the bearer of bad news over email. This is most likely not going to be the place to deliver that kind of news. Phone conversations or ideally in person, if you are delivering bad news, you really don't want to hide behind your emails for that. I know it may be scary, but it's going to come across so cold as well if you do just email it and yeah a bit like a cop-out really yes <laughs> you do not want to be a cop-out when delivering that bad news have those courageous conversations like Disha says it's going to go so much better so pick up that phone mm -hmm. and our last tip today is always use an email signature there are so many tools out there free ones as well that you can create a nice looking email signature and I'm not talking about just sent from my iPhone. That's not what I mean. <laughs> oh, so many questions I've seen online lately about like, oh, I've tried to do my email signature in Word and then I copied and pasted it into my Outlook it's and right. now it looks all over, all over the place. And you don't need to do that anymore. There are no. some very cool <laughs> online tools. We use Email Signature Rescue. Wirestamp yep. is another yep. one really affordable way to have a super professional looking email signature you know even using the likes of canva is not ideal because then you mm. cannot have individual links on individual things images or your email or website can't yep. be all linked individually you can only have one link on one graphic so the signature tools way better option yeah and I've actually had people before just copy and paste my email into a, an email with someone else to pass on my details. And then that person receiving my details can then also just copy the email and paste it into the, the two area instead of them, like if it was an image, having to manually type it out. So yes, there is actually a use for it as well. 
I know that it may feel silly if you're emailing someone having your email in your signature, but yeah, I promise you people will need to copy and paste it at some point. So it's really handy yep. to have that. And the other thing too on an email signature is that people buy from people. Yeah. So have your photo on your email signature and it just personalizes that interaction that you're having, especially with someone new on email, having a photo, yeah. they can actually see what you look like and get a feel for who you are. Yeah. Very important. Yes. So that is it for our tips today. And if you need help setting up a beautiful email signature, then contact us at strictlysavvy.co.nz and our creative team can help you out. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode. If you're currently listening via Apple Podcasts, we would love to get a review from you. Or if you're on Spotify, then please drop us a rating and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.